Boy. Mm-hmm. Women went from fighting for equality, then to the independent women movement, and to now not knowing how to define womanhood? I found many things disturbing about Miss Katanji Brown Jackson Supreme Court nomination hearing. But for the sake of time, I'm not gonna get into them all. I'm just gonna point out two things that was very alarming. And you should be alarmed too. And say they can't scare me. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? Senator, in my work as a judge, what I do is I address disputes. If there's a dispute about a definition, people make arguments, and I look at the right. law, and I decide. Well, so I'm not. The fact that you can't give me a straight answer about something as fundamental as what a woman is underscores the dangers of the kind of progressive education that we are hearing about. Senator Marsh Blackburn asked Ms. Katanji Brown Jackson a very simple but loaded question. Now to the naked ear, one might say it's a legitimate question. Okay, but let me ask you a question. When was the last time you went to a job interview and the person who was interviewing you asked you a personal political question about your views on a certain topic. How would you feel about that? You will probably say, what does that have to do with this job? My expertise, my degree, my work ethics don't have anything to do with a personal view of mine. Now, wouldn't you feel some type of way? You will feel attacked almost, right? Although you may feel like it was a simple question that deserved an answer, was it appropriate for that time? We all have our personal beliefs, whether political or spiritual, that differ. My personal beliefs shouldn't be a qualifying or disqualifying factor for why I'm here. Now, someone else might say, Well, Reese, this job here is different. This is for the Supreme Court seat. Okay. You mean to tell me everybody that sit up there in them justice seats have the same views on everything? No. They all have different views and different ways of thinking. Just recently, Justice Clarence Thomas wife, Jeannie Thomas, was caught sending text messages, 29 text messages, to Mark Meadows, former chief of staff to Donald Trump, encouraging him to tell all those on the right to continue to fight for Donald Trump because she believed that the elections was stolen by the Democrats and Joe Biden. And she also was bragging about being at the January 6th insurrection. That's her personal beliefs, her political beliefs, and I'm sure her husband carry those same beliefs. Is he to be reevaluated for his beliefs or scrutinized for his beliefs? I know some of y'all might say yeah, but I'm gonna say nah. Believe what you believe in, keep it moving, whether it's political or not. So yes, I believe the question was a trap because either way, Miss Katanji Brown Jackson would have answered, it would have been controversial and it would have ha she would have had some consequences to bear on either side whether democrat or republican i believe she did a great job by answering the question plus we all know she knows how to define a woman she lived all her life as a woman she knows how to define a woman the problem with answering that question in this climate is because they have made a lot of that stuff political. They politicize what a natural woman is and what a natural man is. And as a judge, she got to make sure her judgment is clear and cut across the board, no matter how you feel about what other people are doing or saying. Isn't America called the free world where everything goes? Hmm. You can agree and disagree on how she answered, but anybody in that position, whether it was you and you or I, will have to make things clear across the board. Now, don't get it messed up. 
I believe that the question was loaded. Miss Blackburn knew what she was aiming for. And if you go back and watch the whole interview, you will see what let what she say that what she say that led up to her asking that question about how do you define a woman. You will see how loaded and how disturbing the question was. America the free, the home of the brave, and remember this, justice for all. Now, in this next clip, I got your boy, Senator Ted Cruz. And in my honest opinion, made a full clown out of himself. Yeah, I know. I, I hear y'all booing me. I hear all my conservative friends booing me now. But wait, hear me out. I know CRT is the big bad bully or the big bad boogeyman to you guys on the right. But I find it funny that you guys always say, do your research. So I did my research. I went and read the book CRT, Critical Race Theory. And this video here, go check it out. Also, what I find crazy is, Every time I ask one of my hard-leaning right conservative friends where in the book it talks about hating white people and where in the book it talks about white people need to be apologizing to black people for what they forefathers did. And every time I ask them that, they be like, That you, um, you had, you, you, you can. <laughs> but anyway, roll the clip. Republicans and Democrats on the Judiciary Committee have 30 minutes each to question the judge. Senator Ted Cruz, who attended law school with the judge one year apart, spent a lot of his time asking her about critical race theory. My understanding is that critical race theory is, um, it is an academic theory that is about the ways in which uh, race interacts with um, various institutions. It doesn't come up in my work as a judge. It's never something that I've uh, studied or relied on, and it wouldn't be something that I would rely on if I was on the Supreme Court. CBS News legal contributor Rebecca Royfe joins us now. Rebecca, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Senator Cruz brought up a book called Anti-Racist Baby and asked Judge Jackson if she believes babies are racist. The judge's response to this started with a pretty audible sigh. Republicans are complaining about the way Justice Amy Coney Barrett was treated during her confirmation. But a question like this really seems a little beneath a senator questioning a judge for a position on the highest court in the country. What was the point of this line of questioning? I think that there are basically two strategies going on here. One is a kind of teaser for the upcoming elections. And so this is a talking point that has served Republicans well. Critical race theory is something that is you know, it describes many different things, but it is certainly something real. And it is something that has scored the Republicans a lot of points. So by bringing it up, in some ways, it has nothing to do with these confirmation hearings, nothing to do with Judge Jackson, and is really about trying to score some political points. I suppose other than that, um, there has also been this sort of effort to portray her as the most extreme candidate. You know, she is somehow um, the baby of the extreme left. And this I think, uh, is in some ways working um, as a way to convince certain Republican senators or at least justify um, it when those senators vote against her confirmation. So I think there is they're, they're, they're twin goals, and I think the first goal might be successful, sort of portraying this as a political issue. And the second goal, I think, you know, as indicated by her sigh, is really not, because this has nothing to do, her beliefs on the topic have nothing to do with her judicial philosophy. As she said, she has never cited anything um, in this regard, certainly not anti-racist baby, in any of her opinions, as she repeatedly said. So I think, you know, in some ways she comes off, she did seem a little frustrated in that line of questioning, but, I, you know, I think it's hard for anybody watching not to blame her. And she really did refocus things on what was at issue in these hearings, which is, you know, her qualifications to be a Supreme Court justice. She is not anti-law enforcement. She has many family members who are law who have law enforcement past and present. And so she's sympathetic to and proud of those who, um, you know, who protect our communities. But she has also seen the ways in which the system fails from the perspective of a defense attorney. And I think that will help her to offer 
a different perspective, um, at least in those sorts of cases. And it's useful. I mean, even if it's not easy to say, you know, trace any one opinion to her background, I do think it's useful that she might bring up issues that other people fail to see because she's experienced them in that particular line of work. Right. You makes it such a good point about diversity of experience on the court and how important that is. And thought, yeah. Ted Cruz, my guy, listen here. The more y'all fight against the literature of CRT and books like it, the more people like me will dig in and find how true it is because a lot of the literature in there is true. CRT and books like it, it's a law book. They teach it in law school. It breaks down the predatory laws that's on a book that discriminated against people of color. But I'm also glad that you put those books on national TV. And here's why. It gives intelligent people like me and others the opportunity to go read those books that you put out there and go get a clear understanding of what they are saying. Because we don't trust y'all politicians no more, whether you Democrat, Republican, conservative or liberal. We don't trust y'all no more. So we getting into them books for ourselves. We getting clear understanding for ourselves. So I I thank you for that, Ted. Appreciate that. Miss Katanji Brown Jackson answered Ted Cruz gracefully and with integrity. And it's very clear, once again, that those questions he was asking was a trap. The questions were simple. However, they was also loaded because we all know how Senator Ted Cruz feel about CRT. Here's what's crazy. I'm reminded of a portion of scripture where folk like him did the same thing to Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not calling Miss Katanji Brown Jackson some type of savior. I don't even know if she's saved. Mark chapter 12, verse 13. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk. So we see there with the play of words and the semantics and The merry-go-round that they was doing, uh, Senator Blackburn and Ted Cruz, you know, we see how they was trying to trap her and play with words to get her to say something that um, that can pretty much publicly humiliate her and disqualify disqualify her for the job. We are living in a soundbite generation and a selective hearing and reading world. I watch these political talk heads on both sides take bits and pieces of things, twist them, politicize them for their either political gain, public humiliation, or disqualification of somebody else just so it could fit their narrative. But they can't pull that on me. And here's why. I don't trust none of their words. My only trust is in the word of God, period. If you say something, I am going to do as much digging investigation as I possibly could. I even do that with my own pastor. Because one of my prayers is, Lord, do not allow me to be led astray. That's spiritually and that's politically. Because in as much as we have political frauds, we have spiritual frauds who's following those political frauds. They always come with vain philosophy arguments trying to get you entangled in their web. Now, this goes for, like I said, it goes for both Democrat, Republican, conservative, and liberal. All of them. Let me hit y'all with one more scripture real quick. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Thank God. <laughs> My identity is in Christ and not in this whole American system and culture. Because it's one thing I've always seen in American culture. When they can't attack your work ethics, they will try their best to demonize your character and criticize you for having the morals and stance that you have. Whether you're Democrat or Republican, they both do that. So I don't rock with neither one of them. Y'all already know how I feel about that. I thank y'all for rocking out with me. This is your boy, Reese Johnson, and this is the Gutter and Save podcast. You already know they can't stand me. I'm always dropping the facts. I'm always bringing the truth. And if it's in the headlines, I'm bringing it to you. Hey, man, listen. 
do something for Gun and Save right now. Go to our merch store. It's gasmerch.com. Com. Gasmerch.com We got the hottest apparel out right now for men and women The sweatshirts, the t-shirts, and the hoodies And a lot more to come Make sure you go over to Gasmerch.com Gasmerch.com Man, I thank y'all and I see y'all on the flip Peace hey, That was a pretty successful broadcast